In this episode, we take a look at slowing things down by taking a look at braking. As we slow down, I remap my brake to F6. We dive into super detail in a Rapido bus, as well as look behind the scenes of what goes into an episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. We take a look at the Proto Throttle's options for braking, and we get a little picky with couplers. We also check out what the curmudgeon's gripe of the week is this week, only in this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. When it comes to breaking your locomotive and not breaking it on the ground because you're frustrated the way the SDL 39s came out so amazingly beautiful, but when it comes down to the actual slowing down of the locomotive, these both have ESU decoders in it. In fact, it's the exact same engine, but the way it's set up is brake level one, which is on the top. That's the way it comes from the factory. If you hit F10, your locomotive is going to start braking. As you can see, brake level three on the bottom has already stopped. That's because it's a more aggressive brake. And if you think of this in terms of vehicles, think of brake level three as you mashing on the brake, where brake level one is just riding the brake to slow yourself down. And speaking of vehicles, if you look at the little blue vehicle, that is where brake level one stopped. And if you're asking yourself, what's brake level one and what's brake level three? Well, well in an ESU decoder, brake level one is the less aggressive brake. You can obviously go to two, but there is also brake level three, and that is the one that I use because it helps them stop a little bit quicker. So that's what we got in the MP15AC. All right, we're gonna take a moment to show you basically how to handle the high acceleration deceleration on your locomotives. If you have the deceleration set to 255, we're essentially here in notch eight, and your operator wants to try to stop on that magnet, and he zeroes himself down and goes, it won't stop, it won't stop, hey, it won't stop. He's panicking, right? So often they will hit E stop. <laughs> now we're gonna bring yourselves forward and show you how you can control your braking to be able to stop right on the magnet while still having that high momentum. All right, we're gonna try this again, pushing into the car, and we wanna stop right on the magnet. So we're in notch eight. We're gonna slow ourselves down and notice this is where the momentum comes into play in a little bit more prototypical type operations. As we slow down and I've remapped my brake to F6. And there you have it. You can stop right on the magnet anytime you have control using your braking. In this case, the ESU decoders are default F10. Uh, some throttles don't allow you to go up to F10. Um, readily accessible in terms of utility throttles, so you can remap it to a different button. I put it to F6 for my proto throttle, but at the end of the day, this is what gives you a little bit more prototypical braking when dealing with high acceleration and momentum, making it a little bit, again, more prototypical. With the assets of the Milwaukee Road, Sue acquired a fleet of EMD MP15 ACs in 1985. 64 of the units were acquired, assigned 1500 to 1563, and the first 32 were sold, and the balance was attained by the Sioux. Which railroad purchased the 32 units from the Sioux? Was it A, Wisconsin Central, B, Southern Pacific, C, Kansas City Southern, or D, Union Pacific? We'll find out later in this episode. Attempting to weather the prototype. It's time to give a new look to Rapido's new look bus. You shouldn't have to adjust a new bus like that. Well, we do. I end up taking the wheels off here. I'm going to turn the red wheels into white wheels. I end up using a little side cutter to help pull these pins out because they are in there and they're a little stubborn. But you just get the actual cutter underneath, pull the pin out so the pin comes clean, and you end up popping them all free. So we're ready to get these things stripped. But before we actually drop them into the solution, we do want to remove the tires. You can kind of peel them out. And if you can't get these things free to get the hub sitting like you see here, you end up using the other axle and I just put it on here to help push the tire through. But once I've successfully pulled all the tires free and I've got just the hubs, I drop them into Wash Away. This is a scale coat product. It's great for stripping paint. You can use it on locomotives and also bus wheels. I don't think it's designed just for bus wheels. But you can use it for anything that's plastic that has paint on it that you want to remove. So here we have this little container. It looks like a urine sample. Well, this is a used product, so I do mo strip multiple things in here. I've stripped cars and vehicles, just small little products. Drop it in, let it sit for about a half hour, and then after a half hour's time has passed, I end up taking a toothbrush to it. But while we wait, let's seat some people. The Archetypal Ops. Archetypal. Relating to or denoting to an original that has been imitated. Attempting to emulate the prototype. 
just to give you a look on the proto throttle and talk about the different type of braking options. You have variable brake or you have the step brake and we're going to show you the variable braking, what it does and how it functions. But this concept is the same as we just looked at the NCE. We've got our speed going. Let's say we want to offset and shove this car. We're going to brake down and I can lean into the brake just a little bit here. Came in a little hot on that car, but now I'm offset and I'm going to shove that car and find a spot where I want it to stop. So let's say we're going to use that blue tape as our guide. We're going to pretend that's where we want it to stop. Right there. Hit our direction and pull away. Again, our more prototypical movements and speeds, but I want to show you the proto throttle variable braking difference. Uh, and by doing so, I'm actually going to show you by remapping the horn to the braking button so you can hear the difference between the two. So as the locomotive sits there, I'm going to go into the menu. I'm going to configure, configure function, brake. I'm going to turn it to F2 just for your guys' uh, audio assistance to be able to let you hear it. We'll save it. Now when we go back to braking, Notice that basically the horns honking the whole time because you're holding F6. You're holding your brake. Doesn't matter where the brake lever is, right? So if we go back in and show you the variable braking. The variable braking is found under options. There's variable brake. We will turn it on. And there are a couple of different types. There's actually variable brake with the step function or you can turn it to pulse. And I'm going to show both of those real quick. This is step brake, so we'll save. We'll hit our brake. You notice it's basically just honking. So I lightly hit the brake. There's one, there's a few. So if you throw it right to, you're going to get tap, tap, tap on your brake. And right now it wouldn't be braking unless you pushed it further. And now we've actually put it into emergency, but you get the idea. If you brake to here, you got one little tap on the brake. So it slows down a little bit, push it a little further and it's going to be brake, brake, brake. Ooh. Here's a 10 second tip. Pick your battles. You can pick your couplers or you can pick your teeth. You can use a gum dental flosser to uncouple cars. It's just preferred that it's not used. Now if we go back over to the pulse, I'm setting it to pulse and we'll save that. Here's what the pulse is like. Notice how it held it a little bit longer. My personal preference on this, I don't like how it's just soft here. A guy thinks he's braking and now he's braking. So you kind of understand once you leave it here, you're not getting a break there, but once you start to hear it, you got a little break, it just held it and then let up. That's breaking for you, that's breaking more. So that's pulse. I'll set mine back to break and I'll set my options. Turn the variable break off and I'm just going to be using the break to be able to lean into it. So basically it'll be breaking no matter where I am in the movement, it's going to be trying to slow down. And there we have it. So looking for a little bit more prototypical braking, this is one way to go about doing it to be able to control your deceleration of a locomotive if your acceleration and deceleration are higher set in terms of momentum. Makes it a little bit more prototypical, but now you kind of maybe understand how the braking function is working and uh, you'll be able to dial that in on your own system. That or I'm just more befuddled and confused and we'll just use the e-brake. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to take you behind the scenes real quick. I've had a number of people asking about how I edit stuff and put things together. Now, I'm not going to dive into all that because it can get a little bit boring. The greatest lesson you can learn in life sucks and great are pretty close. <laughs> They're not that different. Uh, but I'm going to show you my workstation. This is where I work every day. It's where I do all my graphic design work. Uh, and in addition, I end up doubling it up as my basically production studio. Uh, I do have my laptop here that I take out on the road. If I'm working, I have to take it with me. Um, I obviously can just log into this computer. Now, this isn't a cloned background. This background that's here is the same as the background that's here. Um, those just happen to be 
a coincidence that I use the same desktop. Does it, does it suck? Yes. Is it great? Yes. That's how close they are. Uh, nonetheless, the content that's on here, um, it's all graphic design type stuff. I have all my programs, but I also have the program track hooked up to this. It's uh, right up above here is my program track. Uh, JMRI is on here, and it has most of my dad's locomotives that I've programmed for him on here. So if I need to, I either can export out these files, um, or I'll bring this laptop with me, which I haven't had to do for quite some time, but I do have the content that's on there if he needs it. Uh, this is the microphone that I use for the background or even voiceovers that you hear right now. Um, I end up using this because I think old microphones are amazing and they work way better than anything that's modern. Whoever said that? That's not true. I use this shotgun mic. This is the one that I use. It's a Rode shotgun mic. Uh, it's intended to be used on a DSLR, which I do use it on. Um, but I do hook it up here just so I have decent audio when I'm recording some of these segments. Um, but as far as the computer is concerned, this is an episode that I'm editing together. Um, it's going to be uploaded here shortly. Uh, but I do go through and I chop up the audio and kind of create the content. And once I've got it roughly around 15 minutes or so, I upload it and put it onto YouTube. And then eventually it's scheduled to uh, air on Fridays at noon. So that's the content as far as it's concerned. And on the back end, um, I do organize and I set up where I bring together um, various clips or things that I want to share or show. I say to you, the sucks are great are the exact same thing. You have an ice cream cone, you're walking down the street, the ice cream falls off the top of the cone, hits the pavement, sucks. What do you say? Great. Uh, the curmudgeon's already been recorded. There's three of them in the hopper up there. Um, so I end up pulling just from those. And uh, when it comes to it, uh, all the content that gets created once it's done, uh, I put it into a folder. So this content that's sitting out here will eventually migrate and find its way into a folder. And um, again, yeah, I put it on the backup drives and away we go. So there's a little behind the scenes look at my workbench as well as how the episodes are created for Sue the Milwaukee Road. Attempting to weather the prototype. Now that the people are seated, they're going to need to get painted, and we're not going to go through that because it's a laborious task. Well, that might be laborious, but this is laboring. And that's actually painting the interior of the bus. I went with this soft green to give it kind of that fluorescent, dingy look. I didn't use a bright white because, well, bright white is a little too white. The dingy green is going to be a nice complement to the LEDs, and hopefully it gives us that look of the fluorescent lights that you'd see in a bus. Now, moving on to the exterior, we end up using our favorite material. Yes, that's right, the taco sauce. To me, it washes. These washes are just giving the bus a little dingier look, and you look at it and go, oh, that's on heavy. It is a little bit heavy, but I am using mineral spirits in the upper right-hand corner to be able to soften this a little bit. And that overall effect is kind of a touch and go. Get a feel for it if you put it on too thick. Thin it out a little bit. If you thin it out too much, add a little bit more of the good old Tamiya wash. Is it Tamiya or Tamiya? He says both. Tamiya. Did you guess who purchased the 32 units and say D-U-P? You'd be correct. The U-P purchased 32 of the former Milwaukee Road MP15 ACs December of 92 and numbered them 1397 to 1428. Once the interior was dry, I end up reapplying the windows, and then after the windows were installed, I end up moving on to the stripping of the wheels. Since they sat in the solution probably for about 45 minutes to an hour, I use an old toothbrush, clean these things off, and get them ready for paint. And the paint of choice here is going to be the Tamaya White Primer. It goes on nice and thin and ends up giving you a good look. I did apply a couple of white coats because it took a little bit to get a nice even coat across all hubs and try to knock down some of that red or pinkish hue. After a few coats of the Tamiya primer, I end up moving on and putting some of the Tamiya washes onto the wheels just to give them a little bit more age. And as you can see here, you apply it, but I do use a micro brush to wipe off with mineral spirits any of the excess as well as a paper towel to be able to soak up some of it if you just put too much on. Now moving into the actual interior, as you can see here, we got the people painted. I did use the Tamiya washes over the people because it does bring out some of the details. Thanks a lot, Tom. Is there anything he doesn't use the Tamiya washes on? Now it is time for final assembly as we put this whole thing back together. It's the same as taking it all apart. You just do it in reverse. But when it is all said and done, I think these little adjustments and updates are definitely well worth it. Because in the end, it may be a spendy bus, but if you put a little bit extra time in it, you can take it from something that looks just like this out of the box, which... It doesn't look bad. To this that looks... That's a little bit better. 
when it is all said and done, little updates, that's part of modeling. That's what we enjoy. And well, lights on or lights off, I think we get a good end result. As you can see, that lower lighting effect with that little bit more of the green interior, I hope gives it a little bit more of a fluorescent look to it. But at the end of the day, this is a nice looking bus. Rapido did a nice job and it's good that they did this custom run because in the end, there ain't no bus that looks as good as that. All right, here's a promoting coming at you for the gripe of the week. Gripe of the week this week is about the glues that manufacturers use on all their products. When it comes down to it, I wish you would sell glue that you use because when they say, oh, you can just fix it using this glue, it doesn't work, it doesn't hold on, nothing stays. When it comes down to it, I think you got some special glue that you won't sell to us. When it falls off, well, you just gotta buy a new car, buy a new locomotive. Just sell us the glue, and that's the Kermudget's gripe of the week. Oh, you can just fix it using this glue. It doesn't work, it doesn't hold on, nothing stays. Big thanks to everybody that watches to the end that has hit like, hit subscribe, as well as made comments in the past. It's those actions that help share this content, so if you haven't checked out other episodes, feel free to do so. You can also check out the tour of the GN in 1970, as well as the past episodes of the GN in 1970. 70s. Oh, you can just fix it using this glue. It doesn't work. It doesn't hold on. Nothing stays. <laughs>